All right, in this video, we are gonna talk about troubleshooting an issue with the Kurzweil PC88MX keyboard. Uh, from the initial symptoms I'm seeing, the LCD powers up and shows a series of black boxes across the top line, which tends to indicate that there's a potential issue within uh, the power supply unit, which is primarily located up here on, in this case, in the back side, the left-hand side, we're looking at it from the front, it's on the right-hand side. Uh, the disassembly of this is a bit more complex. If you are leveraging the PC88 service manual, uh, the service manual will tell you that the back panel only requires you to remove nine bolts uh, and screws in the back. Uh, that is not correct. As you can see here along this bottom edge, there are a number of bolts in the bottom that you have to remove. So if you look on the bottom here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of screws that I've had to take out in order to get this off. Once you have those out, as well as removing the side panels, allows you to quickly and easily access the back of this. So from what I am reading about this particular unit, uh, there's a number of different issues that can happen here. Uh, the voltage regulators here uh, this is actually the bridge diode uh, can fail. These voltage regulators in here may go out. Uh, and these capacitors here might dry out. So as we start the troubleshooting steps here, and I'm going to follow the PC88 uh, troubleshooting manual, I'm going to be running a series of voltage checks here to determine, you know, where the issue is potentially is. Um, the manual appears to have some pretty uh, specific steps about troubleshooting the system. So uh, we'll go ahead and get this unit powered up. I'll get it set up into its troubleshooting state. And then we'll go ahead and start taking a look at the potential issue here with this Kurzweil uh, keyboard. Just to provide context for the issue we're dealing with right now, <clears throat> with the AC power on, this is what we're getting on the LCD display. And we're gonna to start to do some troubleshooting on the power. So I'm looking at the schematic diagram here. Um, on the diagram here, I've highlighted the primary components that could possibly be of issue here. Um, again, this bridge rectifier uh, right here is the um, was well, a component that's mounted on the left-hand side uh, to the chassis. Going down further, there's a series of capacitors here that can be of issue. Uh, going out here to the voltage regulators, primarily one, two, and three are uh, what the service manual is talking about possibly being bad, as well as these capacitors here. So uh, looking at this diagram over here, this capacitor, this 10,000 um, microfarad capacitor is that big capacitor right there. And of course the voltage regulators we were talking about earlier are located over in here. So for purposes of this test, uh, we are set up in the troubleshooting configuration to look at voltage across the uh, different voltage rectifiers. Um, I have already done a check of the power supply and it's measuring accordingly, uh, which is 10 volts um, when connected to the third pin on the, on the bridge rectifier down here in the lower right hand corner and uh, the center pin of the AC jack. So I'm getting 10 volts when it's switch is not on and I'm getting zero volts when it's on. So part of this test, second test is I'm checking voltage across the voltage rectifier to see if I'm getting the right voltage. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my negative uh, probe of my voltmeter onto ground junction number one, which on the schematic uh, goes right to the correct ground. And then I'm taking my voltage and I'm checking the pin on the right to see if I have the desired voltage, which is five volts. As you can see on the voltmeter, I'm only getting 3.89. When I go down the voltage regulator number two, I get about the same thing. I'm getting 3.98. So the voltage appears to be low. Uh, I'm not gonna go to voltage rectifier number three, which is in the center of the board because I have to take the board apart to do that. Uh, and I'm gonna go down to the next step, which is uh, checking to see if the voltage is low. Um, I should be reading 10 volts on the pin on the left. When I do the check, I'm only getting 8.57 on voltage regulator number one. And voltage regulator number two, I'm getting 8.57 again. So I have an apparent problem here, uh, which appears to be pointing to um, a potential issue with 
the capacitor and the bridge rectifier. To validate that further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up an oscilloscope to the um, to the same pins and see if I'm getting any R AC ripple. voltage. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to I've got the power on. I'm going to start doing a. So I'm going to check to see if I'm getting any if I'm getting any AC ripple. So I'm checking on pin one of the capacitor, you know, voltage regulator number one, and that's what my signal looks like. That doesn't look clean. That looks pretty bad. I'm going to check the pin three. I'm getting kind of something similar. Then I'm going to go to the voltage regulator number two. As you can see, I'm getting some voltage ripple here. I'm going to check voltage regulator two, opposite side, pin three. And I'm getting about the same thing. So. My initial inclination is that I've got a potential issue here with either the bridge rectifier or this capacitor. Well, I just found something interesting in my inspection of the board. It's that. That is ground junction number two. That is open. That is a bit odd because I'm looking at the schematic here. There should be a number of grounds here. And the fact that that's open gives me a little bit of concern. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at repairing that and see if that's having an adverse effect here on the board. All right, so for the record, the voltage has actually increased a slight bit with the ground being intact. Um, I'm now measuring about 4.4 volts on the left, I mean on the right pin. On the left pin I'm measuring about 9. Um, I am still getting the same symptom though when I turn the power, so when I turn the screen back on and I have junction 802 hooked up, so, sorry, 302 hooked up, as you can see I'm still getting the black bar. So um, I will try a reset and see if that goes away. So as I started to dig into this, if you remember the earlier part of the video, for some reason, whoever had this before decided to run a wire from here to the switch and then from here to the terminal on the bridge rectifier, which I think they were believing that the power was not connected for some reason. I mean, I ran resistance checks between here and here and then here and here, and it's circuit board's intact. Looks like the bridge rectifier is intact because I ran um, a diode check on it. This is the interesting part. If I can capture this, this feels like the capacitor is moving on the board. So I'm going to pop this thing apart and see if I can figure out why the capacitor feels like it's sitting on the board. Well, lo and behold, look at that. That is not making contact with the board. So looks like a pretty easy fix i'm going to pop the soldering iron back on here see if i can get that to reset all right so what have i done i have re-soldered the connection to the capacitor i have re-added uh ground jumper two which uh, i've seen cut in some diagrams and pictures and others i've seen it intact so i've replaced it i've cleaned this up and As you can see, we're up and operational. So, net net is a loose capacitor here on, which is a capacitor number, I think this is C28, ultimately caused a downstream effect that was not getting the proper voltage to these voltage regulators. And with a simple fix, I've been able to get this unit back up and running. So hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, by all means, please feel free to leave comments and ask questions. Thank you.